China is the largest Asian country and has the most people of country in the planet. It occupies almost one fourth of Earth land area. Only Russia and Canada has larger land area than China. China is approximately 5,250 km long from east to west and 5,500 km long from north to south. The land border is around 20,000 km long and its coastline is approximately 14,000 km. China is a multicultural country with a diverse population, ethnics and linguistic group. There are 55 minority groups dispersed across around three-fifths of country. One half of Chinese people claim to be non-religious or atheist. The majority of Buddhists and Muslims are members of non-Han minority. The current population of China is 1,455,643,924 based on world meter elaboration of the latest United Nations data. To sex selective abortion and its one child rules, China has 120 boys for every 100 girls. In the middle of 20th century, Chinese government attempt to curb population growth by instituting the well-known one-child policy. Beijing launched a new approach in 2021, the three-child policy is here. Online poll revealed that majority of Chinese family could barely afford to raise a child, let alone three. Poll was removed within a short time. Inflation is the rate at which the general price level of goods and services grows over time. Inflation raises the cost of everything you buy, diminishing your money's purchasing power. There are three types of inflation, which are demand pull inflation, cost push inflation, and built-in inflation. China is mainly demand pull inflation as compared to the other two. China counts their inflation using the Consumer Price Index CPI. As we know, the higher the demand, the higher the product's price. And the higher the product price, the higher the inflation. China holds the title of the world's largest exporter. Thus, we can refer to its export to understand its inflation. As we can see here, China had a surge in export on the year of 2020 until 2022. The amount of export can be simplified as the number of demands. In this year, Demand is increased due to the people not having access to products. Due to undersupply of products, China's products becoming more expensive. In conclusion, China's inflation became higher during these years. Zero COVID policies caused China's inflation rate to rise. We also can observe that the household increased their savings. After the inflation, China adjusted its policy to seize the demand. However, China had approached deflation after the reopening of the world. Property crisis is also the cause of inflation that impacted China. The risk of heavy debt due to inflation causes people to be scared of bankruptcies among the residential property. The effect of inflation had made the people of China lose their purchasing power. People prioritize the purchase of their necessities as compared to other products. Inflation also made people save less and also take out their own savings. China also suffers losses in goods and services after its people lose their purchasing power. Based on the inflation data of China for 10 years, the highest inflation rate would be in 2019 at 2.90%. Meanwhile, the lowest inflation rate would be in 2000. 21 at 0.98 percent okay so the issue for china right now is that their inflation is very low even if there is a increase in the inflation rate the percentage is very small okay so for inflation china used to policy which is monetary and fiscal policy in monetary policy they can use sterilization and printing currency in which for printing currency the public bank of china can actually produce currency as they want but they have to follow the regulation given by the chinese government in order to not overprint their 
you want their currency. For fiscal policy, they can either curb the inflation by increasing their tax and decreasing their government spending, in which have been done by the Chinese government in 2021. Next are unemployment in China. Unemployment means that people want to work but cannot find a job. Some people who have jobs might not have the right jobs for them. There are two types of unemployment that are affecting China, which are frictional, where someone doesn't have a job because they search for the better one. And it always happens among fresh graduates. Next, are structural where people cannot find a job because they don't have any right skills or it is far away from where they live. Sometimes the job is being done by the machine instead of people. That it can cause us of the unemployment that's happening in China. Causes of the unemployment is because many of the fresh graduates are having to accept jobs that don't pay them very much money or even jobs that don't that they don't even require the skills that they have learned in school. Also, you could only see that for an economy to do well, still they have a lot of they need to have a lot of businesses that provide services. As we can see, more and more boys and girls are learning in school. Because of this, they didn't want to work in factories anymore. In China, there may be a lot of jobs in making things, but not enough people to do them. The government thinks that by 2025, almost half of this job might not have anyone to do them. But the plan is to transform the Chinese economy from labor-intensive in industry to a, to a more technological, service-oriented and knowledge-based economy. Unemployment does not only affect on people who doesn't have a job, but it also affects the whole country. This can make the economy slow down and make it even harder for people to find jobs. When people cannot find jobs, they cannot buy as much stuff as they can and this make it hard for businesses to bring money to the economy and they make, might hide they might have to lay off workers or spend less money and if this keeps happening, it, uh, it will affect the economy unless someone does something to help. The 10 years unemployment data in China is shown in the screen right now. So as you can see, from 2012 to 2015, the data has been maintaining until 2016. In 2016, uh, China's unemployment rate started to decline until 2018. Then, the rate increased in 2019 and 2020, with 2020 having the highest unemployment rate at 5%. However, the rate fall back in 2021 at 4.82%, with 0.18 decline from 2020. Eight recommendation that can be used by China to uh, curb their unemployment. They can start by training their youth in workplace and then providing a youth employment service and apprenticeship. They can also do a career education to their youth and then Chinese college and university start uh, offering cooperation with workplace and then changing their national TVET education system that can help promote youth employment. Policies that can be used by China to curb unemployment would be macro policies, which is fiscal, through taxation and financial, and then also for China to develop their non profit public posts and social security policy. And then they can improve public employment service system and provide national vocation training system. And finally, having an unemployment monitoring policy. 
For conclusion, Chinese economy is on the approach of deflation if government does not discover ways of improvement the inflation rate. Even if a portion of their economy grows at a faster rate, percentage grows much slower. Government must do something to ensure its residents continue to spend money rather than merely save it. The rate of economic growth is another aspect that contributes to unemployment. To summarize, unemployment happens when people who wish to work are unable in finding a job, while it also caused by lack of job opportunities for young people. University graduates learn employment that is unrelated to what they studies.